He is running against President Trump in the Republican primary, former Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois. Thank you so much for joining us. Liam, good it. to be with you. President Trump, depending on the poll, yeah. is 80 to 90 percent support among Republican voters. So why are you doing this? To win, to beat him. Uh, he's unfit. He's bad for the Republican Party, Liam, and he's a danger to the country. You talk about 80 to 90 percent supporting him. I think that support's soft. And what's interesting, Liam, it doesn't measure the number of people who've left the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to head up into New Hampshire again later today and tomorrow uh, in Iowa, New Hampshire. Everywhere we've been over and over, I hear the following. I like some of the things Trump's done, but I'm tired. I'm tired of all the other crap I've got to deal with. So you're not running to criticize him. You, th you actually think you could beat him in a Republican primary, despite the fact that he's polling at 80 to 90 percent. Yeah, this is probably, I've only been in it a month. This is probably the most difficult thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Why in God's name would anybody, right, put themselves through this unless they wanted to win? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine doing this unless you were doing it to win. That's why I'm doing it. You are a staunch supporter of Donald Trump's when he was a candidate. In 2016, in fact, a few weeks before the election, you tweeted, I'm sure you'll remember this. The musket tweet. On November 8th, I'm voting for Trump. On November 9th, if Trump loses, I'm grabbing my musket. So what changed? That's still one of my favorite tweets. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I didn't love tweet, uh, uh, Trump and I didn't like him. He wasn't Hillary. It was a pretty easy vote for me back then. If you There's could go no back, way. would you vote for Hillary Clinton knowing what you know? If now? I can go back, uh, I would not have voted for Trump, uh, and I will not vote for him again. Again, we've been asked that question, myself and other candidates in this primary. Are you going to vote for Trump in 2020 if he's the nominee? Hell no. I'm running because I think he's unfit, so I couldn't support him. What changed from that tweet in October of 2016 to where we are now? Um, I realized pretty quickly after he got elected, Liam, that virtually Every time he opens his mouth, he tells a lie. Uh, I mean, almost every single time. I don't care what your politics are. I can't support a president who lies as much as this one did. does. The final straw was Helsinki last summer when Donald Trump stood in front of the world and said, I'm with Putin and not my own intelligence community. That was the final straw because he's, he's incapable of putting the country's interest ahead of his own. You have criticized President Trump in the past in addition to what you say are dishonest remarks from him for yeah. making some racist comments. And you have your own past of some concerning comments. You Absolutely. Were, you were a birther regarding President Obama's No, birthplace. let me stop you there. You, you were uh, not a birther. No, God, no, I never got into that at all. That's but crazy. You did but say I that did he was say... only elected president because he's black. Absolutely. And you made some references to potentially he might be a Muslim. Yes. How do you respond to people who say you don't have the moral ground to question President Trump's comments? I, I think it's, it's because I, I come from what got Trump elected. Uh, Liam, the same people who voted for Trump voted for me, sent me to Congress in 2010. The same people who voted for Trump have listened to me on the radio these past five or six years. You were years. part of the Tea Party movement. Absolutely. And we went to Washington in 2010 to raise hell about all of this government debt. And uh, Liam, what's interesting is I helped create Trump. Uh, part of the Tea Party rhetoric, part of some of the angry rhetoric that conservatives like me have put out there the last five or six years, sometimes it went over the edge. You and regret sometimes, that? Oh, do you, God, do you yeah. apologize for it? Uh, it, it I've, I've spent, <laughs> it's interesting, Liam, I've spent a good amount of this last month since I've announced apologizing for some of the things I've said. And you mentioned what, what, what's different with me and Trump. Look, I'm not a racist. I say things about race because I care about the issue of race. I'm obsessed with the issue of race. Sometimes I said offensive things, but it's always to promote an idea. This guy in the White House, he doesn't give a damn about any of that. All he cares about is Trump. So he'll be a racist, he'll be a bigot, he'll be a xenophobe if it will help get Trump elected. Let's talk about the Ukraine scandal. Yeah. Do you believe President Trump should be impeached for asking Ukraine and China, on China they say, potentially he was kidding, uh, to investigate Joe Biden and his son? Should he be impeached for that? Hell yes. Uh, again, think about how far we've come. I mean, I thought he should have been impeached after I read the Mueller report last April. He obstructed justice, period. But you, Liam, you've got the President of the United States 
who pressured foreign governments to interfere with our election. He says he was just trying to fight corruption. When has this president ever given a damn about corruption? Come on, that's, you've, you've got his, we've got his own words, Liam. I mean, on the, the front lawn of the White House last week, China and Ukraine should both investigate the Bidens. It's right there. That's impeachable. I mean, it's clear, right? That's, that's what's fascinating about this whole discussion, Liam, is that's collusion. Imagine six months ago if Robert Mueller, part of the Mueller report, had the transcript of a conversation between Trump and Putin where Trump asked Putin to find dirt on Hillary. That would have been the that smoking gun. That was the basis of that. That was it. And that would have been the smoking gun in the Mueller report. Trump would have been impeached. That's what he did with the president of Ukraine. Shouldn't we let the voters decide? They're going to decide in a year anyway. Should we impeach him when we're right on the precipice of letting the voters make that choice? You don't, you know, you know what? You don't contemplate the politics of impeachment. You do what's right. And if we have a president, and we do, who's abused the powers of his office, who's used his office for his own personal gain. I was on TV over the weekend, uh, Liam, and I called Donald Trump a traitor. Uh, broadly defined, I think he is a traitor. He's betrayed the country. When you ask a foreign government to screw around with our elections, that's a betrayal. That's a big deal. Let's talk about policy because I, I think most voters won't necessarily know where you stand yeah. on a lot of the issues that impact them at home. Health care. You voted when you were a congressman from Illinois to repeal Obamacare. What's your plan to replace it? You know what, uh, return, get rid of Obamacare, all of that money that we spend on Obamacare, return it to the states. The states know better how to use that money to take care of their citizens in those states. And then what we've got to do, Liam, man, we have to have a whole conversation about health care in this country. Um, the vast majority of Americans need to begin assuming their own day-to-day -day costs when it comes to health care. Those with chronic health care conditions, those of need, we should always take care of. Do you consider health care a right? No. Gosh, no. It's a right in a lot of developed countries. Not in America. All of Not in America. Our rights in America protect us from government. Now, health care could be a, an agreed upon benefit that society agrees is a benefit that we should all pay for. But in America, you don't have a right to health care. You don't have a right to a roof over your head. But isn't the current system Broken. unsustainable? Absolutely. I mean, the costs are as high as they are. That was true well before Obamacare. And you say, well, let's leave it up to people to cover their costs. I don't think most people can cover that cost. No. So how do we fix that? Because we have to change the conversation. Liam, uh, you're younger than I am. We've got Americans living longer and longer and longer. In my parents' generation, Americans were living into their 60s and 70s. Now we're living into our 90s and we're healthy. We're playing golf at 94. That's a really good thing, right? But how the hell are we going to pay for all that health care? That's the conversation that neither Republicans or Democrats want to talk about. And what I'm saying is we've got to change the conversation. Americans of means like myself, we need to begin assuming more of our day-to-day -day costs. This notion uh, that the Democrats are putting out there, Medicare for all, let's just have government pay for everybody's health care. Bull, we're $23 trillion in debt right now. We can't afford the health care we've got right now. You've been a staunch defender of gun rights, yeah. as evidenced by that tweet that we mentioned earlier. Do you support an expansion of background checks to cover private sales? Abs well, absolutely, and all commercial sales. Look, our focus should be, and I am a big Second Amendment guy, our focus should not be taking my guns away. Our focus should be on making sure those people who shouldn't have a gun don't. If I go down the street and I go to a gun dealer and I buy a gun, I undergo a background check. If you, Liam, sell me a gun, I should have to undergo that same So you agree to check. expand to that Absolutely. private sale, close that loophole. Absolutely. How about uh, a limit on the capacity of a clip or a magazine? Or a limit on, say, an AR-15? Should those be publicly available? What do you say about that? Absolutely. Look, 99.99% of all the Americans in this country who own AR-15s don't kill people with those AR-15s. But the few who do wreak a lot of havoc. The few who do can kill people with 
any gun. They can kill a lot more people with an AR-15 well, than you, they can you, with a handgun. You know gun. what? Most of the semi-automatic guns in this country right now are handguns. Every bit as lethal with a magazine as an AR-15. No, it's not as lethal. The oh, AR-15 is much more powerful. Oh no, Shot. no, 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 Liam, you can you can add you can add a magazine to a to a handgun. You can do almost anything right now with M any semi-automatic weapon. Our focus should not be on taking these guns away, but our focus should be on making sure crazy people, bad people, don't have access to guns. The other thing I'd look at is what's called these red flag laws. Mm. You support those? Oh, a, 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 as long as they pass constitutional muster, just another way to help keep guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them. Do you believe climate change is caused by man? Unlike this president, climate change is not a hoax. Uh, I believe climate change is real, and I think it's almost idiotic to think that man uh, hasn't contributed to it. In, in 2017, you supported the Trump administration plan to cut funding for climate research. Would you reverse yourself on that? Where do you stand on that? No, I think, I think there needs to be a government role when it comes to research. I don't know how much money we should spend on research, but government has to play a role. Look, Liam, here's the problem. My party, the Republican Party, under this president and too many of my fellow Republicans do believe it's a hoax. And the problem with that right now is we're letting the AOCs of the world and their Green New Deals carry the day. We don't even have a seat at the table when it comes to climate change right now because we're denying it exists. I want to sit at the table so that we can work on common sense solutions. Where do you stand on abortion rights, and would you hope as president to get a Supreme Court that would overturn Roe versus Wade? Uh, I'm pro-life, end of story. I believe that that decision should be sent back to the states. Roe v. Wade was a flawed decision. There's no constitutional right to an abortion. You were pro-choice in the 90s. What changed? After about six years of thought, prayer, discernment, and research, I've always been pretty libertarian. Mm. Um, I realized that, that 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 life is a life inside the womb. Wouldn't and, one and of the libertarian has, positions be, though, that a woman should have yeah. her right to her liberty, which is to her body? Yeah, Liam, it's fascinating. The libertarian movement is actually split on this because you're right, and that was my first instinct. I'm libertarian. Government stay out. But I'm liber libertarian. I don't want my government doing a lot of things. Principally, what I want my government doing is protecting life you actually do see this libertarian philosophy that this is one thing government should do, protect that life in the womb. When, where do you define life beginning? Is it conception? Conception. Life so begins at, at conception. So at conception, a woman can't do anything at that point on, in, in your opinion, to end that pregnancy? In my opinion, that's when life begins. And also, in my opinion, Liam, this is a terribly fraught and emotional issue. And what we have right now is we've got both extremes carrying the day. We've got uh, certain states in America where abortion is legal right up until moments before that baby would be born. And then we've got other states outlawing abortion at the moment of conception. The vast majority of the American people are somewhere right in the middle, i.e. at a point of viability. And I think that's ultimately- but Isn't that the Roe v. Wade standard, viability? Yeah, but Roe v. Wade, again, based on, you on want the, the states to have the Yeah, right yeah to there's make no, it, it's a flawed, and we don't have time to get into it, but it was a flawed constitutional decision. There's no constitutional right to an abortion. That should be left up to you the You support states. the standard of viability, but not the Roe v. Wade precedent. Yeah, I think that's ultimately where we're going to end up. Last question What do you say to the people who don't trust that you have, quote, found religion on President <laughs> Trump? That you're sensing the way the wind is blowing oh my, and yeah. that you're jumping into it. I was a conservative talk radio host for six years. 95% of my audience wanted to hear every damn day, Liam, that Donald Trump walked on water, right? I could be Sean Hannity. I could still be one of the biggest radio guys you out there. You lost your radio show. Well, yeah, once I announced my run. But I was losing, I was syndicated, nationally syndicated, but I was losing stations around the country this past year. Because you were criticized. Because I was critical of Trump. If I cared about the ratings, if I cared about money and my fame, man, I would have done what Hannity and all the rest of them do and just say Donald Trump's the greatest. I'm doing this because this president is unfit and he's a danger to this country. And I'm telling you what, Liam, if we give him four more years, pray for this country. Uh, this is, as I said, the most difficult thing I've ever done. 
Uh, I've thrown my life upside down. I've given up my livelihood because I so believe this man needs to be stopped. Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois, we appreciate that. Hey, Liam, so thank you, man. Thank you. Good to chat with you. Thank you.